thanks for coming and thanks for not leaving any seats left. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, my name is Pablo. Um, I'm currently contributing to Diaspora recently. And I'm a Mozilla representative in my country and I founded the local chapter on my city of Hacks Hackers. For those of you, of you who don't know what Hacks Hackers is, it's a crossover between journalists and developers to make uh, news with data and mixed data journalism and that data visualization, that kind of stuff. For instance, in my city, we, we, did, uh, we worked with the local newspaper to map the homicides on 2013, which were huge, a huge number. And the map really was helpful to show how, how they were developed on the geography. Um, so I recently started contributing to Diaspora on the UX side, I hope, and it's not real yet, but I find some things on the way when trying to contribute, trying to get the UX culture into the development process. And there were many problems and differences and obstacles and things that I had to overcome and I have I yet have to overcome this year to to make it really happen. And this talk is about that. It, it, it's not a talk about uh, wireframing and prototyping. It's about doing UX in free and open source software projects. And I would like to know if you can raise your hand, how many of you uh, are or consider yourself purely developers? No, so you don't have, you are purely developers. You don't, don't have a design side, an artistic side, or nothing like that. Backend developers? All right, and how many of you are designers, or you consider yourself designers? And UX people, UX something, interaction design or something, UI, front-end ninjas and stuff? Right. So yeah, it's. I, I, I know it, it was going to be like a mixture like that. So here we are to talk about this. What is open source UX? I think sadly it's something that I don't know if open source UX is a thing yet. We, let's, let's try to make it something. Um, I think, yeah, this talk is, is about that is about what is open source UX and how can we open the processes of design to, to get the free and open source projects uh, to mix with the UX culture. So I, I think we, we should ask even further first, what is UX anyway? I think UX a uh, definition of what is UX is pretty elusive. Uh, there's people that, that think they saw a definition of UX, but it's, I think it's like the Sasquatch, it's like a myth. Uh, so I'm going to, to work with my, my own definitions of what user ex experience is. So let me introduce you to, to what I think that is. And let's just remember, it stands for user experience. And I, I know I'm stating the obvious, it's user experience. But I think it's a good exercise to start with the very basics to, like, to reset our head, to reboot our heads, and start thinking what user experience is and should be and why we need that in, in open source projects. So, Basically, it's the, the experience a user has while using a product. And just remember, a product can be anything. It, it, it doesn't have to be like a mobile application, a hybrid mobile, social, web, whatever. It can be anything, um, something for a sysadmin. Uh, anything is a product, and everything needs to improve its user experience to, to work better, because that, that's it. The final goal, you, you, when, when you add 
uh, that easiness to a product when, when you make a product, a product that is easy to use, easy to understand, that is intuitive. There, there is gain everywhere, everywhere. E everyone gains from that. Um, user experience is something that can be measured, it can be improved, and also it can be developed and designed. And as you are both developers and designers, you both know what that is developing and design. Those are processes. And those are iterative processes. And they have a lot in, co in common, but they come from different cultures. We, I am both a developer and a designer. And as a developer, I know how the open source movement works or how free software project works. Well, you have to work a lot with community and you have to integrate yourself into the community. It's not the same of, sorry, of a commercial project. It has many, many differences in, in the way in which things get done. It has a lot of mailing lists, endless discussions that maybe commercial projects don't have because they have a product manager which is a dictator and is just dictates everything and is always wrong. And well, this is a, a different kind of, of work we have to do. And I want to talk about good user experience too. Um, I think flippers or fins are pretty good user experience. I like things that, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that user experience goes, goes for everything. I'm, user experience is, is I, I think of it as a child of maybe industrial design or architecture where design where form meets function. And I like to see things that are like this, like uh, they are symbiotic, prosthetic, uninterrupted, continuous. They, they integrate with you, like the fins, when those are really good prothesis for swimming on the water. And they enhance our feet. And that, I think that goes for everything. I, I like to think of user experience or interaction design or even industrial design or design in every fashion as the way in which we communicate with technology. And this bottle is an example of that. It's good for drinking. <laughs> um, also, let's start with what, or oh, let's continue because we already started. Let's continue with <laughs> some, some things that UX are, is not. Um, as, did, as this Gestalt image, there, uh, depending on what work you do, there, there's a lot of people with different ideas of, of what UX should be. And I, I, I try to gather some to, to give some examples. Uh, so one is that UX is a process, is something that is repeatedly written on, on blogs, Many authors talk about this, about UX being a process. And yeah, UX design is a process. US, UX development is a process. Uh, UX is actually an attribute of your product. It's something you can measure, right? You are not talking about a process when you say UX. You are talking about the user experience of, the experience of your users on your product. That is something that can be measured. It's, it's not something elusive that it takes a lot of time to determine. No, every product has some user experience. Maybe no one design, design it, but if you are a developer and you are moving some buttons around on your design, then you are doing user, user experience or interaction design. You are already doing it without knowing that you are doing it. But yeah, UX design is a process, not UX itself. UX is an attribute. I, I like to make that distinction because it's, it's really noisy when, when people write just whatever they think. This is another misconception. UX is not beauty. Uh, beauty, of course, plays an important role in something that we call the user experience. We want things to be beautiful. 
maybe this bar is not that beautiful, but it's useful. It can be better. Um, and beauty is also a really elusive thing, and it's hard to it's really hard to define beauty. Philosophers are trying to define beauty for the last, I think, two thousand years, and they almost can't. So you can go with I don't know color harmonies and golden ratios all over your design, but that that won't turn it magically into a good user experience or even into something useful. However, I, I should say beauty is beauty conveys some values like trust. People will often trust, uh, and I'm not making assumptions here. This is data. People will often trust a product if if, if it's beautiful more than someone some product that is not. Um, so yeah, and th that happens a lot and that's why people often trust products that are, uh, I don't know, spyware, to, go, to call it in some way. And they just trust it because they are, because they are beautiful and that's it. They don't ask questions about something that is beautiful. So it's pretty, pretty dangerous. Beauty is dangerous always. Then UX is UI. This is, I think, the, the, the most common misconception. I think pretty much uh, I, I, I was on this side on some, some place in my career. Uh, I, I started doing UI like a gazillion years ago. And UX involves many other things. This has, has been saying, I think it's pretty well known. Is it involves visual design, interaction design, user testing, performance, everything. It's part of the user experience, and we can go f even farther and say that branding and packaging are also parts of the user experience. Um, and yeah, I, I, this was a list of from a blog that this this is all the things that. UX claims to be. I, I don't know if I agree 100% with this, but yeah, it's interface, interface design, physical prototyping, usability, information architecture, graphic art. Yeah, and I should, shouldn't turn back because you, you won't hear me. Yeah. Um, well, this is just an, an example of uh, the many things that UX is, and the few things that people think it is, which, which are just interfa interface design and visual design. Uh, and yeah, this is another one. Um, I heard this a lot, like drop a UI library into your project and bam, you have UX and everything is wow. Yeah, that's, that, that is not true. Uh, I think for obvious reason, I, I think I don't have, it, it, might, it might solve a problem or two. I, we saw this happening with uh, Bootstrap. I think Bootstrap is like a disease for the web. And it, Diaspora is, is using Bootstrap, and now we are migrating to Bootstrap. I don't agree with that, but I, I, I can help it. Uh, at least I, I don't want to use like the bootstrap styles, the colors, etc. We are using only the grid, which is I think the only useful part of bootstrap. And that's why all all the sites started to look the same because people think that bootstrap is UX in some fashion. Uh, or that your user interface will look good enough if you use bootstrap and that is it. And this is another one, um, how to explain it. Um, there, there is a myth that says that design is art and it is something that can go well with develop developers. Like it's design is something that some crazy random person does on his, on his computer, like, like an artist. And, there are these, these like prejudices 
and on artists like you know, they are two two emotional people you, and well designers are and they are really attached to what they do i am a designer too and i suffer that but design is not art uh, that's why this guy chris messina said open source design is an oxymoron i don't believe that i think uh, maybe facebook privacy is an oxymoron but yeah, or web security, maybe, but <laughs> not open. Just one, just one question, when did he, or where did he say that? On the internet, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't have the sources. <laughs> <laughs> the sources are at the end of the talk, I think I included that. Uh, you can Google that, and or you can duck, duck, go that, and you will find it. Um, so yeah, design is not merely art. Art is one thing and design is another. Design comes from architecture and other disciplines where form meets fun function and it's like subordinated to form. You, if, if you want to, to do a beautiful battle, I'm using this as an example for the rest of my life, uh, it has to serve a purpose. The, the, the cap has to cover it and it doesn't have to spill, etc. So I take um, industrial design examples because I love it uh, and I think this, this is uh, one I like. This is an iron. Um, so you have a style, you have an, like, an artistic approach, you have aesthetics. This iron can be of many colors, the designer chose orange for that. So the style varies, um, but not the basic shape of the f thing you have to build. You, you need a handle to iron and a flat hot surface to make your clothes look like in 1920. So, um, so that, that details like the color, the ornamental choices the designer has. The, he, he or she can do that, uh, but they have to respect the basic function. Otherwise, it's art, like in this one. <laughs> this is not good design, as you can see, and I think it has a really bad user experience. <laughs> but <laughs> as an art piece, it's pretty cool. And I don't know what NASA has to do with it. Yes, this is this was tested by only one user, <laughs> <laughs> and they they decided to go with the designer. <laughs> um, so that's it. It's style varies, and that's an visual design problem. Oh, whoops, almost. This is bad industrial design. Let me just put it in my pocket. Um, so where we are. So style varies. It's a visual design problem, a UX one, and UX is actually independent of style. And they're very different things. So we are not yet talking about UX in open source projects. We are talking about UX itself, but I think it's a good start to, to be all on the same page on what UX is because I'm pretty sure that everyone had a different opinion of UX. And you all know how mine, which is the one that is right, I think. Uh, so let's review what the current status. That's pretty harsh. I don't want to hurt any feelings. But I have no idea what I'm doing. It's, um, it's a good meme for this. Uh, it happened to me a lot of times. Uh, and yeah, this is, I, I heard this a lot, like free software UX sucks. And sadly it's true in most, in, in, I, I, I wouldn't like to say in most, maybe in many cases. And also that commercial software does better. And yeah, commercial software is another kind of producing things. It's like making cars. It's just another culture that we don't share a bit of it.
and they they even try to steal things from the open source culture or maybe they, they have learned things from the open source culture but it's a different way of production of uh, even it's like a different way of manufacturing things uh, so it doesn't have anything to do in uh, especially the resources that commercial software has don't have anything to do with what free software is and big corporations spend lot, lots of money to convince you that their UX is is excellent also because in the last I don't know two three maybe five years UX is like a hype term and it's something that says like oh this has great user experience, you have to use it. And that's not even true. And I see many commercial projects that really suck. I'm going for one example. I think this image speaks for itself. Big news, Instagram finally lets you edit photo captions. Which is a stupid feature to do. And it's worth 35 billion. So yeah, it had a really <laughs> shitty UX and they convince you this at best and this is not what we aim and yeah we so let let's talk about why why free software UX why people say free software UX sucks um, I just realized it's, it sounds like false sucks which I should realize that before. Oh, sorry. Well, let me start again. Um, I'm going to enumerate some common problems that you might have read or suffered in the past. One is this lack of participation. There are not many designers involved in open source culture. Uh, I'm happy that there are, there are some designers here that's really good. I hope after this talk you you go jump into projects to to do even more that you may be doing now. Um, I don't think this is uh, th there's it's like a war between designers and developers. And maybe developers don't welcome designers that much. They come from very different worlds, and designers are pretty used to work alone. Maybe pretty much because of this style thing. Every designer has its own unique style and you can help that. But you can go around that and maybe have some workarounds to, to work with open source projects. We, we'll see that later. But basically this, there are many few, very few designers working on open source projects. This is one of the reasons why uh, there are no, often there are no clear paths for contribution. Um, designers, when they even, it, it happened to me on Diaspora when I jumped into uh, to, to Diaspora, I, it, it, it began uh, because I had some friends which I recommended Diaspora to, and they say it, it was ugly. And, I don't know what to say. I say, well, it's a social network. You have posts and images, and comments. Feature-wise, it's pretty much the same. It has some cool features that maybe Facebook doesn't have. Uh, but yeah, that was the main drawback for them. They, they, nobody say like, uh, I don't like the way friends are connected or the, how the stream is shown. No, it's uh, I don't like it. And, uh, I started doing whatever, like redesigning the whole UI and sending an image of that. But that worked, and I'm going uh, to explain that later. But yeah, as, as developers don't know how to integrate design into that flow, so sometimes there are no clear paths. You, you should find some uh, issue tracker with some UI bugs to solve. And the, those, most of, of the times, they, they are just minor UI bugs, like this button looks weird, these, are, these things are not aligned and stuff. And that's not really designer work. Maybe that's 
Uh, they work for a uh, uh, front-end people. Um, design involves many other things. Developers also don't know where to start. Um, there, there are many, many different places to, to start contributing with UI code. If you are a UI coder, um, for instance, I tried to do some contributions to Diaspora when I started, and I realized they, they were migrating the whole framework to Bootstrap. And yeah, it, it, you can go change a part of the UI if it's going on a refactor, and there are no clear paths there too. So there are no, no roadmaps for designers and also for developers. Um, then yeah, you also have those long rangers that are trying to to redesign the whole thing by themselves and sending a pull request with a million changes and trying to change the whole way the application works. It, that's not the, the way it works. There are style differences. If you have one, two, three designers trying to contribute on your project, they 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 will all have different visions of what it should like in colors and yeah. I have to hurry. And yeah, style differences. You know what I say. <laughs> <laughs> the infamous can I has requests, people requesting features crazy, like crazy. Uh, this happens a lot. Then everyone is a designer. This is like, like the too many cooks uh, problem. And it happens on diaspora, it happens everywhere. Uh, customize all the things. This is really, really close to the nature of open source projects. You, you, you want your project to be customizable for all the users. That doesn't work for identity and for many things. There are no proper tools. Most tools are closed or paid. Uh, there are a few guys that are t shaped like half developer and half designers like myself. And we really help. When you have a, a, a person like this, it really helps to integrate both worlds into one. Then it's code held. Sometimes, sometimes code is a mess. And you, I, most, I, I, I'm, I have trouble finding good uh, front-end coders lately. I don't know why, but... I often find uh, good backend code and messy frontend code. Don't know why. Also, there's maybe no room for you. Uh, you are trying to to contribute and no one listens. That leads to no visibility, and that is uh, pretty helpful. If if you are contributing with something, putting energy on it, and putting your effort and your knowledge, and you don't get visibility, you get frustrated and you should abandon it. A style, well, this is again, a style goes, uh, goes away. There's no style ending. Well, uh, assumptions, everyone makes assumptions about what the users want because they think they know because they are developing the, the software. The resistance to change that happens in life all the time, so it happens in development too. And many other, uh, maybe you can share your experience afterwards because I have to hurry. And yeah, I wanted to to share some, some things I, I found out while, while contributing to Diaspora. And I like to say overall that this as I said before, this is not a talk about wireframing or prototyping or that kind of stuff. The skills you need to have to be a, an open source UX designer are mostly social. You, 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 you need to integrate with a community. So you have to become a member. That's the first thing. Introduce yourself, identify some problems, do some work to show your potential. I did that. Be bold but be humble to get to know the community. That's the big, biggest perk from FOSS projects. Always ask the community, get validation, be honest, invite others, relax your ego, don't try to be a hero, give recognition if someone helps you, don't take over. 
it's, it's really common sense in social skills. If you don't have it, you, you have a, a bad time. Uh, this is one that I found considered starting with identity because those projects many times lack of, uh, have a lack of identity, so there's not even a, a choice of fonts and colors and things that will lead to the user experience later. Well, that identify current UX problems, ask, ask people, do some user testing, try to get UX into the integration loop, and to continuous integration, there is a place for UX. Uh, most people don't know where to put it, but there is a place, and you can make your own your own way to prototype, make testing, try to to get validation from the community, and A/B testing is a good way to do that because if you can vote designs, then the community will have that sense that they are choosing. And it's, it's not fake, they are really choosing, and you are trying to, to give some options, but you can, uh, uh, you can please everyone. It's that, that's uh, the road to failure, trying to please everyone. Woody Allen said that. Go with baby steps, don't go for, for a full redesign, propose smile fixes, fixes, and res respect the code base that is working. Uh, for instance, in Diaspora, I try to, to suggest doing only CSS cha changes that will enhance the UI and will provide a better user experience. Find a team, there's, uh, there's people working on the UI already. Um, as in Diaspora, there are a bunch of people working on UI, as he is. Uh, but they don't call themselves the UI team or the UI people or the UI smart or anything. Um, maybe it's a good time to assemble that. Set goals, set deadlines, deadlines show the larger picture. Those, all these things involve social skills and also have some kind of leadership in the UX. Because in most projects, there is no one doing that. And if there is no one, there is a good op opportunity to uh, have some leadership, not, not to increase your value or your ego, but to lead people into that and teach them. And well, try to avoid the taste police, which is the people that say all this stuff. It feels weird. I hate pink. I don't like the font. You can find haters everywhere. And you have to integrate to the flow. Don't try to impose your own tools into the mix. Use the tools that are on the project. As version control, issue trackers. And yeah, use open formats, which is something that I try to advocate as a free software advocate. I try to do that everywhere. Um, well, this was a question. Let's just skip it. I'm going to show you a little of what my experience was with Diaspora last year. Um, so I got validation, which was like an advice I got from Sean Tilly. Uh, he told me, write, write a patch, write something small, send a small par pull request, and you'll get validation from the community, and then you, you will be able to suggest more changes. So I contributed a patch, then contributed a, great, a greater patch, and then I started with really shaky stuff, like changing the whole Diaspora Foundation site in one step without asking anyone, which is the exact, the exact opposite of what I said in this talk. But that, that was a, a good, uh, I showed you very quickly what the current site is. Um, I can zoom back. This, this is the current foundation site. And I sent a proposal which was really shocking for everyone. This was my first proposal, which was pretty, a pretty big change, but I used the same code base 
So this is this supports the, the, this is made on Ruby. I didn't know Ruby, so I had to learn Ruby. And this is using the same code base and some different views. And you, it uses the language and everything. And I provided reasons reasons for everything, for the font choice, for the colors, for the background, why the logo is that big. Because everyone would say, "Hey, make the logo bigger." And <laughs> yeah. I, I know that. Uh, in, uh, I had to learn Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Probably, uh, sort of a problem yeah, but uh, you 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 don't have. I, I'm a developer and a designer. If you are a designer, you don't have to learn Ruby. But at least you you can tell that if you pretty much respect the same layout, it won't be necessary to do that much changes, and you you can always ask a goal there from the project if that will, will be too much. Like proposing something and saying, hey, will this be too much? Yeah, always, always, always. My, my proposal was, I wrote a proposal really detailed with I choose this phone in this color because People told me, yeah, I don't like the white bar, I like it black, and like I was the employee. <laughs> and I provided a bunch of reasons, even a frequent, frequently asked questions, like, yeah, I did that. Like, why do you want to do that for recognition? No, I think this is better for the project. Uh, and then I did that too. Of course, well, I got some criticism, which was great feedback, actually, and got some validation from the community because I showed potential. Like, like this, this could be much better with some little effort. And I still don't know why we are not using this site <laughs> because this is working. This is a working site. It's not a, a, an image. And yeah. Then I got, go back there. I realized there was uh, identity problems. Uh, even the, the 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 font on the logo could be Helvetica or Roboto. Anyone, whatever works. And I started even uh, I started an identity project on GitHub. I made it all uh, freely available and on Inkscape. And that's a thing I I, I try to. To advocate to making those things, the, the assets available. I started doing this project. Uh, let me show you really quick. I started doing like an identity manual for the diaspora, which is something really basic for a designer. But it, it doesn't, Diaspora doesn't have one yet, so this is a, like a first start to, towards a, a user experience. Whoa. And then, well, then these are the next steps for this year. I, I'm trying to get the UI team engaged, trying to work for consistency because there, are, there is a lack of consistency. I'm working on the Diaspora UI too with an experimental pod. I started with some stylish override. This was, let me show you the current, current UI, the, the one that people told me it was ugly, which is this one. This is the current diaspora UI. I started doing experiments on my browser with stylish, just overriding CSS without touching anything. This was like the outcome using the same markup with just CSS changes. And I have an, an experimental pod running that looks like this. And it's starting to look, I think, a, a little more solid. And yeah, I'm trying to get validation from the community in every, every step of the process and trying to open the process as much as possible. And it's all an experiment. So that's it, I think. And I'm trying to build this, which is every pixel heart, which is uh, like a digital agency to teach people to integrate UX 
uh, to connect designers to build free software tools. Well, uh, to build free software tools for design, for prototyping. Like I, I like to use Invision, which is a, a commercial product for UX, which where you you can build prototypes with images and clickable hotspots, with really easy. I, I want to build that in, on a free version. If anyone wants to help, just look for me on the diaspora stand. Um, I'm trying to build a user test recorder to 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 record uh, think aloud tests, which is basically a screencast in a webcam. I design voting app because I think that will be really helpful for community projects. One question about the design voting app. Is yeah. Like, uh, are you serious about that or? No, 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 no. Kinda I'm not serious about anything. I mean, honestly, because <laughs> it's like I mean, for Diaspora, you have like this Lumio app, right? This. Uh, yeah, but it's for voting, like, like for the Congress. It's yes, no, abstain. I want to show like three, like A/B testing. Okay. For A/B like testing. Different, different options. But maybe A/B/C/D testing. Okay. It works well. Huh? It works. It, it works. Yeah. I tried a few and it, they didn't. Um, also, building a community inside that uh, is uh, right now I, I'm building a website that will be on Tumblr, but it's empty now, so come back in two weeks and it will, <laughs> will be full. And yeah, try to teach about open format, about open tools like GIMP, Inkscape, uh, share knowledge, write articles, build a place to to developers and designers to work together, and and try to 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 write articles and and teach things like this talk. Uh, yeah, and I'm looking for funding to do that, but I don't know anything about funding, so. I don't know when that could happen. And yeah, I make a call for designers. Um, designers and good designers earn a lot of money, and they are not used to to share their time like coders do, like for over 30 years ago. Uh, coders really know that culture. Designers don't. And if you love design, I think it's it's great to do design for open source projects. This is a uh, a uh, quote from Ilya, on the, on the Aspire itself, there is no money to be made. And yeah, a uh, quote for colors to help designers to get on board, because as the guy that was sitting here, that is now invisible, he uh, said, I wow! Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah, the most elusive designer in the world. You are a designer. And you don't know how to call. Nothing, not a single line of code. So this, this is why I, I put this. It's a call for coders to help designers to uh, get them out. Because this guy here, he's really willing to to help. He's here and he's, he's standing there and he's willing to to help on UX projects. I'm sure. And yeah, a quote from Jacob Applebaum that you may know from the Tor project. Build free software for freedom, no proprietary malware for cops. I think that is pretty much it. And yeah, that's that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pablo has overrun quite a bit, so he can ask one question. Well, you can find me on the diaspora stand too. Okay. So we can leave the room if, if we need to. Okay. Like to it's question. Yeah. You just offered that guy's help for open source projects, and I'm sure he's going to get bombarded in a second. Yeah. Me included in that line. But how, as a as a person in the open source community, as a tech person, how do we find like these designers who are willing to help? Or you are on here. Is, is there, like, yeah. Is a I think this room is a good place to start. <laughs> Diaspora is maybe another yeah, one. Like, Can we use the OS, OS yeah. design hashtag to find them when we need 
I'm trying to build this to do that. I'm trying to build a community f to do exactly that too. So, there, I don't know any places to do that, so that's why I, I'm trying there's, to. There's several initiatives trying to bring together developers and designers. There, yeah. Like also earlier in the day, we had we had some uh, examples of that, and uh, there's like an idea about an open source job board for or an open source design job board, for example, which brings together uh, open source projects and designers. Uh, so that's one thing. Like it doesn't exist yet, but uh, there's several people thinking about that, uh, working on it. Well, considering we've all been using the OS Design hashtag, can we yeah. like keep in contact using that? Like, can we yes. just like yeah. that yeah. way? Good one. Can IRC channel open source design as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Already. Oh yeah. So so <laughs> the IRC channel hash open source design. If you want to look for a designer, just join that, and uh, you will get referred to like someone. OS Design is going to clash with operating system design. What? Um, it looks like that. Uh, wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh no, it wasn't. It wasn't used that much uh, on Twitter. Actually, uh, so. so this conversation of how do we get together designers and developers in open source is going to be part of the closing that we are going to start in like two minutes. So if you want to stay and contribute to the discussion about that, um, please do so. Also, if you have a project and you'd like to pitch it to the designers in the room. And there'll be, there'll be some time to do that as well. So we'll start in a couple of minutes. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.